Alrighty, what is going on everyone? So uh, now we're finally getting to something new, which is going to be the feedback portion of this circuit, right? So if you remember in the beginning of the video, I said I chose this power supply because it utilized a feedback system from our output which is something I thought would be very useful to know because this is something that a, large, a lot of larger power supplies will utilize um, in order just to st help stabilize their, their output. So like the feedback system is comprised of mainly you have this optocoupler to transfer the signal across the low side, high side, um, like isolation boundary. And you have some other um, components that kind of set the actual parameters of our feedback system. So we'll kind of jump right into kind of how that works. So if you've made it through, if, you, if you've already, if I don't know where, whoever you are watching this, uh, maybe you have made it through your engineering program, maybe you haven't, but um, if you've made it through the whole engineering program, everyone will know that they, they've probably taken a class called feedback systems or something like that. So this is kind of what we're talking about here. If, if you remember anything from feedback systems, then where they, they talk about like poles and zeros or something you learn about in feedback systems. So I don't want to get too much into how that all works about like how a, the closed loop gain of a system and it's uh, like gain equations and it's transfer function and stuff like that. So the, I would say that's like outside the scope of this specific video because we're focusing mostly on the actual project of the power supply. So I'll make a separate video later detailing uh, feedback systems and I'll give whatever all the information I think is necessary to, to know to understand these um, things so I'll do that all all later um, but yeah that's what I just want to let you be familiar I just want you to, to know that yeah if you've taken feedback systems hey this is where we actually design a feedback system so um, you know this is like a shocker to me I thought wow I, I just thought we did stuff on a whiteboard and we never actually put it into practice um, but you know I, I was wrong so um, with that, that little rant over, um, let's just jump right into like a quick summary. So like I said, this circuit sets parameters for the closed loop feedback. Um, so looking again, going to the poles and zeros, we actually use resistor and capacitor values to set our desired poles and zeros of our system, right? So what that looks like is we have these four major components. We have R comp C, C comp Z, R comp P. C comp P, so hopefully you can put these together and realize Z is zero, P is pole, and so somehow these resistor capacitor values set the, the poles and zeros of our actual you know feedback loop. And I guess we'll talk a little bit about the circuit here. So I don't actually know how this works in terms of what it does. Like what I think this is is some type of timing circuit, right? So we have this feedback pin. And so what I think these RC components, they're either filtering or they're uh, creating like a timing circuit, sort of like the soft start circuit. So if you go back and watch that video, you understand what I'm talking about with that. Um, but ultimately what they do is they just send, send uh, data or they send a signal into this feedback pin, which goes into the internal logic of our controller. And that's as far as us as the electrical engineers need to go, right? We don't really, this, this chip is, is a mystery. It's proprietary knowledge. Um, I actually don't even know how much we're allowed to know what goes on inside it or how much TI tries to keep secret, I should say. So don't worry about it. Just, just understand what it's doing is these resistors and capacitors are sending data into our controller via this feedback pin. And that's all you got to know. So let's start calculating some component values now. So we have, uh, the, like so the feedback system, side scope is video. okay, good. I already covered that. So. Uh, the first equation we get, if you look through the data sheet, is going to be R comp Z equals 1 over omega comp Z times C comp Z. So this is going to be a lot like a previous video we did with, I think it was the current sensing network video, where there's a whole bunch of nested equations. And when I say nested, I mean there's a lot of nested equations, right? So we got to go and, you know, do a lot of calculations and calculations. And they're not difficult, but it's just a lot of them. So um yeah so the first thing we got to figure out is what is omega comp z and omega comp z is equal to 2 pi f comp z and f comp z is equal to 1 over f b w divided by 10. so i put some notes on what these variables actually are i couldn't find anything 
in terms of what, I mean, two pi times f in omega, right? That's a pretty familiar thing. So that's that's in terms of like, you'll, you'll have a frequency in like hertz versus like radians or something like that. So this is, I think this is all omega comp z is doing. But f comp z is going to be, the, that term stands for our compensator zero. Um, and that's kind of all the data sheet mentions about it. And so that's going to be equivalent to, like I said, FBW divided by 10. So FBW is going to be bandwidth, should be one fourth of our RHP zero frequency. So RHP is right half plane. So that's also another feedback systems term. Um, so if you take a feedback, you should recognize like a, a right half plane zero. Um, if you haven't, then don't worry, I'll make a video explaining all of this stuff. So um, continuing on, FBW, now we have to calculate, okay, what is FBW? So FBW, or F bandwidth, is equal to F right-hand plane zero divided by four, right? So F RHPZ is, like I said, right-half plane zero. So what is R F RHPZ? F RHPZ is equal to, okay, so now we get some real stuff we can work with, finally. We got R out, we got D, we know what D is, that's duty cycle. We got NPS, we know what that is, that's primary to secondary winding ratio. We got two pi, we got LP, which is primary inductance, and we got another D. So it's kind of interesting, I guess, if you wanna take just a step back and look at this, that understanding how far some of our early design, design choices go in terms of affecting something like this um, I just think it was, I thought it was super interesting, right? Because we selected the, the, the duty cycle and the primary to secondary winding ratio a long time ago. And we kind of see how those effects have trickled all the way down, all the way to the feedback system um, circuit, right? So it's it's pretty interesting how impactful some of these, these decisions, um, you know, the impact these decisions can have. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Um, so yeah, um, I didn't feel the need to put any notes on those variables we've already seen. However, R out is a new variable, right? So we'll explain quickly if you just look at the, the notes I have. So R out is going to be stand for our output load. So this is the resistance necessary to give us the desired output current at the specified output voltage. So I just have the equation showing we, uh, so we specified an output voltage of 24 volts and we also specified an output current of five amps. So we picked those two values. So you just if you know ohm's law v equals ir you just do the the, the math and we'll uh, divide that across v over i equals r that's what we did there so we know that r out equals 4.8 ohms so now we've just now we're starting to just go back and start plugging things back in right so we have f r h p z is equal to 4.8 ohms and then we just plug everything in. We are, hopefully you know where we got the D value from. If you're not, go, go, go check out some other, uh, the previous videos. I would definitely say you probably wanna watch all of these things because they all kind of uh, affect each other, you know? So I think we first introduced the D value in like the MOSFET video. So the MOSFET transformer controller video. Um, so yeah, we know NPS is equal to 10 and then we have two pi LP is two millihenry times 0.6748. Okay, makes sense. So now we got 5,986.28 hertz for FRHPZ. So now we can plug that value into our FBW equation because now we know this value. We can plug it all the way back into that equation. So then we divide it by four. We know FBW equals uh, 1496.5 hertz. So that's this value divided by four is how we get that number. And then we divided by 10 because we know that F comp Z is equal to FBW divided by 10. So then we divided by 10. So we just move the decimal over 149.65 Hertz, pretty easy. Then we can get all the way back to Omega comp Z because now we have F comp Z. So we can plug that back in and we see we get 940.323. So what they then do, so what we do is going all the way back to our initial equation, what we have is R comp Z is equal to one over omega comp Z times C comp Z. So we already, we have just solved for omega comp Z. So then if you read in the data sheet, they just say, okay, we got to solve for two component values at the same time, which means you guessed it. We arbitrarily pick a component value. So we got 0 0.01 microfarads. 
that's what the data sheet said to choose so I you know you know me if the data sheet says choose a value it's way to do that than to try to do some complicated math so we're going with it 0 0.01 microfarad so now the only thing left to do is solve for R comp Z right so if you look at this we plugged in this value for Omega comp Z and we plugged in this value for C comp Z which when you you know uh, do the math is this comes out to be 106,346 uh, ohms okay so now congrats we've calculated both C comp Z and R comp Z so we're basically halfway done so then we kind of do the same thing for our C comp P just looking ahead um, they have a similar equation so F uh, so we have this equation 1 over 2 pi F E S R Z over R comp P so this is a very very similar equation um, so this is F E S R Z is E S R stands for equivalent series resistance um, and then Z I don't think I saw any notes in the data sheet about this, this is why I have this blank right here so um, sorry about that um, so yeah so then again the data sheet instructs us to arbitrarily choose a value which we're not gonna argue with um, so choose R comp P or R it should be R comp P sorry this this should say R comp P not R comp um, so yeah, it just says arbitrarily choose that to be 10 kilo ohms. Then F E S R Z, we have an equation for this. We have one over two pi R E S R Z times C out. So R E S R Z, I think this should say R E S R. Um, this is the equivalent series resistance of our output capacitor. So where we get this value from is the data sheet of the output capacitor that we selected, right? So if you remember, we solved our out output capacitor a long time ago. And again, this is kind of one of those interesting things where you see how decisions way back earlier on actually affect, um, you know, things later down the road. So looking, if you look at our, whatever output capacitor you chose, just look at its uh, equivalent series resistance that's in the data, in its data sheet. And in my case, mine was, it's a very, it should be a very small value. So mine was 29 milliohms and and my C out value was 2000 um, microfarads. So our F E S R Z is equal to one over two pi times the, you know, we just crunched the numbers and now we get 2744 Hertz. So then we're going, we're plugging back into this equation now that we have solved for F E S R Z and we know we have two pi times 2744 times 10 to the third because we have arbitrarily selected our comp p to be 10k and crunching the numbers we get 5.8 nano farads for our, our c comp p value so yeah so that pretty much covers all of the the four major feedback components so these kind of sets the parameters for feedback loop so next we're going to cover the other major components um, that's mostly do uh, mostly have to do with the function of the actual optocoupler. So we covering those next. Um, please be sure to drop a like if this video helped you out a lot. It would really help my channel out a lot. Um, and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the rest of the videos that are going to be in this series. I post a lot of other electrical engineering related content. So if that helps you out as well. Um, then yeah, subscribe if, you, if that's something you're interested in. So uh, thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.